Good afternoon. My name is Juan Carlos Lopez. I'm an admissions advisor for the University of California. I do both the, the, the recruitment part and the evaluation part of the University of California, but I also represent the University of California as a whole. Thank you for showing up today and thank you for looking at, at this workshop. I hope this, this is uh, something that uh, you learned something out of this. My goal today is to give you a presentation or an overview of the University of California and why I apply to the University of California and its benefits from the University of California. First, we want to start with uh, telling you uh, this, this, the real simple thing about the University of California. When you think about the University of California, a lot of you think of it as a standalone university. You don't necessarily look at it at, as uh, all these campuses. We like to think that our, our University of California is one university with nine options. Technically, there's 10. The University of California is, is uh, the University of California San Francisco is the 10th campus within the UC system, but it's only geared towards individuals who want to go into medical school or, or, um, or, or nursing, but that's only a graduate program. The nine campuses you see here are there for you and for your, for your benefit in regards to how you're going to see each campus. And many times or another, when, when you look at the University of California, living here in California, a lot of you either think about either UCLA, Irvine, and San Diego, and nobody else. Okay. Uh, maybe you're probably, some of you are probably thinking maybe in Berkeley or maybe Davis or maybe Santa Cruz, but not necessarily in that sense. But when thinking about the University of California, it's very important that a lot of you start looking at what is the most important factor in regards to its campuses. Uh, do I want a campus that's, that's, that's uh, for example, more than 30,000 students? Then you're looking at San Diego, you're looking at uh, UCLA and Berkeley. You're looking at a campus that's a mid-sized campus between 20 and 28,000. Then you're looking at Irvine, you're looking at Riverside, Santa Barbara, Santa Cruz, and of course, uh, you're looking at Davis. Or you're looking at campus that's on the beach. Uh, technically, there's only two campuses on the beach. That's Santa Barbara and Santa Cruz. Everybody's at basically inland. Or a campus is in the city, and that's perfectly fine. You're looking at San Diego, Irvine, UCLA, uh, Berkeley, for that matter. If you're looking at a campus that's, um, that's on the beach again, you know, Santa Barbara and Santa Cruz or inland, you're looking at Davis, Merced, and of course, Riverside. Okay. I just want to find, remind all of you that the, the application itself opened up August 1st. Uh, this, this is where students can actually start filling out the application. You're not allowed to submit the application until November 1st to the 30th. It doesn't matter whether you're the first one or the last one, as long as you get it in before uh, November 30th, uh, before midnight. What I always recommend is that students get it in the week before Thanksgiving, give yourself some time for that matter. Okay. Now for each campus that you select to apply to, uh, it is $70 per campus. And if you qualify fee waiver, you're gonna get up to four campuses, okay? Now, keep in mind, if you get those four campuses, uh, and if you want to apply to more, that's going to be on you. So make sure, make sure that you pay for that as well. We don't participate in the early uh, action. Well, that means we don't tell you whether you've been admitted early. You're going to have to wait till uh, end of February, beginning March, all the way to April. So we do have a span of, 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 of a couple of months telling you uh, whether you've been admitted to a UC campus. So don't, don't panic uh, and just be patient. And keep in mind that when, when you get your offer of admissions or you've been told about your admission status, if you, have, if you were denied admissions, please don't look at it as a rejection. Uh, we, don't, we don't reject students because there are other ways for you to be admitted to the University of California. This is just one way of doing it. There's, you know, there's a transfer out if you, that's something that you're thinking about. But for the most part, you know, um, going back to the idea of, of looking at campuses and how they are going to be essential to your needs and how you're going to uh, choose them, and many times or another, a lot of you will probably thinking, you know, I'm going to choose this school, that school, and this school. Those are considered the best schools in, in the world. Well, keep in mind that with California, the UC itself, just having a UC on your diploma carries a lot of weight. This is why we, I started with the idea that the University of California is one institution with nine options. And, and a, lot of, a lot of students always forget the opportunities that come with being part of the UC family. And I'm going to get into that towards the end and, and give you that idea. But I was telling you, you know, about the urban, the suburban, or rural settings, you know, the rural, you're looking at, you know, schools that are outside of the city, uh, the, more, the size of the university, that's very important. Some of you might say, you know what, I want to go to a smaller campus. I want to go to a mid-sized campus. I want a large campus. And that's perfectly fine. And then another thing too, you know, the question is, do I want to live on campus? Keep in mind that some campuses do require for you to live on campus for one to two years. So that's going to become an important factor. But the one thing that should be a factor when looking at the University of California or looking at a campus. Uh, you, the question you should be asking yourself, does the campus have 
what I want to study. That's very important. And the reason why we say this is because more times than that, we have students that, that apply to a campus and uh, they might not have their major, okay? Uh, for example, let's say for you wanted to apply to UCLA, but you wanted to be a business administration major. They don't have that at UCLA. There's only three campuses that offer that, Berkeley, UCR, and UCI. You see that? Or I want to go into nursing. Not every campus offers that. So you're looking at maybe uh, Irvine and UCLA as, as, as a priority for schools. So you see, you got to be particular in regards to what you want to study, and that's going to be essential to your success of within the University of California at the same time looking at the benefits that come with that. Now, I want you to be aware within the University of California, there's over 700 majors, and that's awesome. And we have about 67 uh, Pulitzerized Laureate winners. So that's, you have a quality of professors who teach at the University of California. But at the same time, the University of California is inventing three to five things every single day. This is the reason why we're out here talking to you about the opportunities within the University of California, because we're looking for the next innovator, the next inventor, the next creator, the next mover and shaker. Those are important to us, but it should, be, should also be important to you as a student who's thinking about the University of California. And every campus uh, as a whole, we all have the same, as far as the humanities concerns, we all have the same majors. We all have the, the psychologies, we all have the sociologies, we all have the histories, we have uh, the medias and what have you, but where it's different, you're looking at uh, maybe the, um, the, the sciences or the engineers, where there, a lot of us do have the engineers and, and the sciences, but we're particular in how we look at the sciences in, in engineer. So keep in mind that you're, you, you're gonna to have to do the research in regards to how that's gonna benefit you. Now, one of the things too you should be aware of is that is that it doesn't really matter whether you applied undeclared to the university, that's not gonna, that's not gonna hurt you, your chance of getting in, but you also gotta be particular in regards to uh, the three campuses that, that have the most population, uh, they have limited space. So you gotta have to worry about how you're gonna to apply to. Well, basically what I'm saying is that applying to the University of California, you, you have to apply smart and broadly to those campuses across the board. Okay, so be mindful of that. Don't ever, never, never, never consider that, oh, I'm gonna to apply to this UC campus because that's my safe school. The experiences across the board, every campus has the same opportunities, the same resources, and the same support for you as a student once you've been admitted to a campus, okay? Now, all what we wanna make sure that you, you understand is that we look at all students from first generations to veterans, to students with disabilities, with DACA or undocumented, uh, the guardians, students who are fosters, students with dependents, uh, transfer students, undergrad students formerly incarcerated. Those are the type of students that we do uh, have applied to our universities. So I want you to be aware that, that our students are a priority, students in California are a priority. While 90% of our students do come from California, we wanna make sure that we continue that, that promise in regards to accepting the students to who go into our campuses, okay? Now, who is a first year, who is a first year student and high school graduate uh, may take a college course while in high school, that's fine. A lot to take college classes at the summer after high school and graduation. So in other words, a lot of you basically, when you went to the university, you might consider this as a factor. So basically, let's say you're, 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 you graduated from high school and you wanna to go to um, Rio Hondo and take maybe an English class or, or an art class there, that's, that's accepted before you start the university, okay? Or let alone take a summer class prior to you becoming a, a senior or what have you, it's still allowed. Where it's different is that, let's say for example, you, you don't um, decide not to go to the university and you decided to enroll at Rio Hondo in the fall, then you become part of the transfer population. In other words, you have to wait two more years to transfer out to the University of California. But we're not gonna get into that because that's not what this is about. What this is about is making sure that you have all the requirements in place for you to, to apply to the University of California. Now, keep in mind that with the University of California, uh, between your ninth grade and your 10th grade, you have to take all these 15 courses. In these 15 courses, they, they, they basically identify it as taking maybe two years of history, four years of English, three years of math, more recommended, uh, three years of science, three, two years of science, three more recommended, and two years of language, three or more recommended, and one year of uh, visual and performing arts. That's basically an art class or uh, something that's part of that area. Keep in mind too that, that with these courses in place, uh, one of the things that we find challenging for a lot of you is this, is that, you can go through, the, through high school and take all these courses, but the one question you're gonna be asked is that, 
if your school offers the opportunities for you to take an honors or AP courses, and if you have not taken that opportunity, then you, in many ways or other, you hurt yourself and the chances of being admitted to a campus, okay? So even, even when you think about the University of California, a lot of you, when you look at a campus, doesn't matter which campus, you know, if you look at here, what the picture there, Irvine, a lot of you probably ask yourselves, um, you know, um, I, I, the GPA at Irvine is a 3.9 or a 4.2, for example, um, you know, average of last year's uh, incoming class. I want you to be aware that the University of California, we don't look at your average GPA for admissions purposes. What we're basically telling you is that you need to have a 3.0 or above, the, 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 you know, the, the, the greater the better, the more opportunities you have and the more competitive you become for admissions. Uh, you need to have at least a 3.0 to apply, utilize 11th grade to calculate that GPA. Now, if you've taken in between your 10th and 11th grade, you've taken, you know, the summer after, after freshman, you've taken summer, summer school or um, taken college courses, we're going to use that. So this is why we tell you, we calculate from your A through G uh, courses in 11th, 10th, 11th grade includes summer prior to your 10th grade and summer before your senior year. Hopefully that's, that's. Now, because we've, we've we implemented and because we've been in a situation the past year, we did make some arrangements so that students who apply to our campus, we are gonna use the past credit grades are okay in the A to G completed in the winter of 2020 and summer 2021. So if you've done that this past summer, you're perfectly fine. Past credit grades not factored into GPA. So what does that mean basically? Yeah, you may have a pass or credit, but that's not gonna, either pump up your GPA nor bring it down. It's just not, we're not gonna count it. But if you get grades, we're gonna be counting that as, as, as simple. So here's what I'm telling you. You need to have a 3.0 and above, the higher the better, the more competitive you become for admissions to apply to the UC system or any campus, okay? Do not uh, get trapped or get fo or focus on the average GPA because that's not gonna help your, your situation. Apply, apply broadly through all the camp, all the universities because we wanna make sure we offer you uh, opportunities for you to be admitted. Now, we do also offer opportunities for students who've been identified as top 9% within the University of California where we changed the rules a little bit because we're no longer using the SATs or ACT as part of this. So you must be a California resident, attend a, a, a high school in, in California, uh, have a college board school code uh, that's completed, 15 of the 15, 11 of the 15 required courses. And many of you who are want to be competitive, a lot of you have already completed that. Complete remaining A3G courses by the end of your senior year and UC application automatically indicates ELC status, eligible local context of the 9%. So basically you don't have to do anything on your end. We do it on our end. We basically, once you apply to the university, we're going to identify you. What this basically means is this. The ELC is basically, is, is kind of a, a safety for a lot of you. If none of the campuses, uh, let's say, offer you admissions, but you meet all the requirements, uh, this ELC basically guarantees you admissions to a campus. Okay, It might not be the campus of your choice, but it will be a campus within the UC system. And whether you're going to accept that admissions or not, that is up to you, you know, to, to decide. But one thing I would tell you right now is that whatever campus offers you admissions to their campus, I would take it if you have been admitted to any other campus, or even if you've been on the wait list, you take that. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure you have a home for fall of 2022. Isn't that awesome? So in the selection process, as I told you, there's two aspects of the application process where you have the, the all the requirements met, then you're going to have your, uh, you're going to have the selection process. And how does that uh, come into factors? Basically this, okay? We're gonna be looking at the comprehensive review of your application from the GPA to the performance and number of eight courses, your talents and your participations in any special programs or education programs, such as maybe a gear up, uh, maybe you're part of AVID, those kind of programs. And of course, when looking at your honors and AP courses, did you take advantage of those honors and AP courses while being at your campus? And if you're taking advantage, excuse me, if you're taking advantage of those courses, then you become competitive in, at, the end, at the end of the day, okay? Now, so one of the things I would tell you too is that, and, and I forgot to include it here, is that apart from all of this that you see here on the slide is this, uh, we're gonna look at the extracurriculum that you basically have, um, have, have, have taken uh, of. For example, you might basically have your academics in place, but you also might have taken being part of the, the sports or the clubs, organizations, 
or activities outside of your of your comfort zone or outside of your school, those are become those become essential to your success. So basically what we're doing is trying to balance out everything that you've done, not only academically, but also socially. And if you could balance those out, that makes you a very competitive student to, to be part of the be considered admissions to or admitted to the University of California. So those are the factors that we're looking at. And the, and the third factor that we're looking at is your PIQs, or in this case, your personal insight questions. Now, your personal insight questions are not necessarily your, um, it's not necessarily an essay. It's, it's more of a, a, a Q&A. We want to see what you have to say with your own words. We're not looking to see whether you know how to use the thesaurus. We're not looking to see whether you know how to use the SAT big words and what have you. We're looking to see whether you yourself can answer these questions. Because the University of California does not interview, nor do we look for um, uh, letters of recommendations, this is the best way for us to get to know who you are. And, and utilizing every part of the application to explain your situation becomes crucial to the success of your application. Keep in mind, the more information you give us, the more, the better we know who you are as a student who's applied to our campus. Because we're gonna take in consideration your challenges. We're gonna take about all the opportunities you took advantage of. We're gonna take advantage of all your favorite academic uh, programs that you really like. You're gonna tell us about maybe why the University of California is a good place for you to be at. Those are the things that we're looking at. And there's eight questions in the PAQs and it's probably some of you already started working on those. And you're only allowed to select four and to encourage you to select for the best fit your need. There's 350 words per answer. And again, you know, uh, we're not looking for you to be the best writer in the world. What we're looking for is that you're genuine and you're honest in regards to the response that you put on your, in, in, in your answer. So again, by far, whoever, whatever, whoever tells you that this is an essay, it's not an essay, it's a Q and A. So the best thing and the advice I could give you as, 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 as someone who reads these application is basically this. Ask yourself the question out loud, record your answer, okay? Record your answer and provide and, and listen to that answer. And also be, be aware, um, a lot of students have the tendency to write about their parents, which is fine, but you have to make sure that you are embedded into that answer because it has to be all about you. Let me give you an example. A student, students who I've seen in the past, uh, they answer a question that's on the, on the PIQs, uh, Tell us about your favorite academic subject and how does academic subject help you inside and outside of the classroom? Well, we had, I had a couple of students who answered that question by saying, uh, my favorite subject is PE. Now, my job is not to determine whether that's the wrong or right answer. My job is to determine how did they answer that question and does it may, is it clear to me what, what they mean? And yes, students will write, something to, will write something to the effect of the reason why I selected PE is because PE gives me, gives me um, I play sports for my campus and playing sports on my campus, I have to know how to balance both my academics with my playing time. You see how that works? And that becomes an important factor in regards to understanding who you, and then explaining how that helps you outside of the classroom is rearranged in time management and what have you, that becomes an important factor. So please be mindful that when you are answering these questions uh, that you're thinking about yourself and brag about yourself, and that's perfectly fine. It is okay to brag about yourself because that's what we want from you as an individual. Now, a lot of you might think that going to the University of California is expensive. Now, keep in mind that a lot of you might look at the CSUs or the, or the state universities, which are a fine institution, but you might say, well, tuition is a lot less than this at the UC. I want you to be aware that the University of California, we're doing everything possible to making sure that our students have all the things in order in order for them to really, really get funded through our system-wide system, uh, uh, financial aid. So every, every campus that, that, um, that, we, that, that works with the students, they wanna make sure that we, we provide them with all the essentials that are needed for them to be successful on our campus, okay? Now, keep in mind that there are certain programs in place that are gonna help your student. For example, if, if your parents earn less than $80,000, the University of California, sorry, the University of California is gonna help you with your tuition and fees, cover that, and then, we also have the middle class scholarship that you know your parents earn between uh, eighty thousand and one hundred seventy thousand, go up to forty percent. And there's, of course, also the, the 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 factors that some campuses will offer you a merit based scholarship, and this has to deal with uh, just your academics. If you perform well at your academics, the University of California is going to provide you with that as well. And that's something again we provide you with with enough financial aid that you're going to be okay at the end of the day. Okay, and. Everything goes with what you bring to the table in regards to your, 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 your academics and your, 
your performance and of course your income of your family that's going to help you with all these factors so that your your student or you as a student is going to receive all the benefits that come with being part of the University of California. So one of the things that I was telling you earlier is that <clears throat> being part of the University of California is that you need to think about how we distribute all the income or all the tuition fees that come along with, with uh, attending a university. So one of the things that, that a lot of you parents, a lot of you students will be receiving once you apply to the to FAFSA in, in October of this year, a lot of you will be receiving a financial aid award letter come in the springtime of next year, and it'll break it down to, to basically where the money's gonna be going, to room and board, tuition, personal and transportation and what have you, or healthcare. Ways for you to save money, as simple as this, is that if you think about healthcare, um, if you already have health insurance, if you wanna include that, you could actually wipe away 2,700, thus bringing your cost of attendance to the university less. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes the room and board is a little bit different and then it's cheaper in some institutions and that's perfectly fine. It's a matter of you really thinking about how you're going to, to manage that. And keep in mind that uh, some campuses do require for you to live on campus. So take that into consideration. But we wanna make sure that you as an individual, you're looking to see how you're going, your, your fund is gonna be looked at next year, but also how the University of California is gonna be paying for those things. 49% of our students have no debt. 55% paid no tuition, 71% get grants and scholarships, you see? So you see our students are, are receiving the benefits from that. And we wanna make sure that they, that they get all the, all, all, the, um, all the ins and outs of the institution. Now, the national average for debt coming out of the university is about $30,000. The University of California is about $21,000 or less. And that's perfectly fine. And please do not be afraid of getting loans because a lot of times when you think about getting loans for education, we don't necessarily think about the, the long value of it, of that education. Think of it, you know, compare that to, to a car, you borrow $21,000, it's gonna lose its value once you drive it off the lot. And within five years, you know, the value of education, yeah, you, might, you might have more out of it than, than, than less when you have a car. So think about that. The value of, of education is gonna go up more and the value of your car is gonna go a lot less. So it's very important for you to understand that parents specifically do not be afraid to look at those loans. And they also might benefit you in the long run because if you're, if you're part of the loan, uh, our write-offs for your tax write-offs are gonna be part of that experience as well. So think of, so thinking about the, the University of California, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, and you ask yourself the question is why would I apply to the University of California? I kind of mentioned to you a little bit on what is essential and what's important. And that is, uh, the University of California being one of the most recognizable universities in the world, one. Two, a lot of you who are thinking about maybe studying abroad uh, or maybe doing what they call the UCDC uh, Sacramento Center programs or internships, that is surely part of the university experience. And essentially what that basically says to you as a student who's thinking about the University of California is this. So you're looking at the University of California and you're allowed to go to another country to take courses while being credited towards your diploma. Or you could do an internship and you don't necessarily have to be a political science major or a, a anything of the sort. You could do an internship either in DC and in, in the capital or Sacramento. And the benefit of these two programs, which I hope that you you be aware of this, is that you could be roommating with other UC other UC students, which I think it's, it's fascinating. But the one program a lot of you should be aware of is this. We have what we call the Intercampus Visitor Program. The Intercampus Visitor Program allows any UC student. So once you become a UC student at any given campus, you're allowed to take a term at any given UC campus, okay? In other words, if I'm at San Diego or UCLA and I wanna visit a friend, or I wanna take see what life is like at Merced or Davis or Berkeley, you could take a term up there and experience the life there. Now, you're not a student on that campus, but that's a benefit that you're gonna have within the UC system. So you see, within the University of California, you as, as a student, you really have to explore those opportunities in order for you to get the full experience of being a UC student. At the same time, um, being part of the University of California also has a lot of perks in regards to you uh, maybe maybe uh, sharing research among in each campus and, and being involved in all those things. That's something that you wanna be aware of. Now, once you apply to the University of California, then what you wanna do is look out for all the free programs. For example, some campuses may have an overnight stay. Please take advantage of those. We're gonna have, hopefully in the springtime, a lot of, a lot of open houses. If, if, if everything goes as planned, everything is safer next year, 
you would be able to uh, to uh, to attend one of these one of these uh, uh, campuses and see what life is like. Some campuses might fly you into their campuses. For example, I know that uh, Davis does fly some students up to UC Davis just to see the campuses. Uh, we provide at UC Mercer we provide some incentives for students to come and visit our campus. You know, to provide them with 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 some kind of uh, uh, um, incentive as well. So think about those kinds of things, but expose yourself to all the campuses you apply to. Think about how those campuses are gonna be beneficial to you as a student. And think about how they're gonna help you at the end of the day and become part of a member of the University of California. Now, I provided you with these resources that become so essential to your success from the selection process for freshmen. What this does is basically gives you, every campus has all the um, key factors that we utilize for admissions at every campus. There's 13 factors, which I included some of them at the beginning. And then the selection process, what are we looking for and what have you. Again, this is just a guide. This is not a must have the guide because every student is different. And of course, you know, uh, what is a first year freshman or, 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 you know, because we're trying to get away from you being a freshman, but a first year. Also, if you want to go into the transfer route that we have that as well. And we want to provide you with a lot of opportunities for you to have. So at the end of the day, you to say to yourself, everything's in order and I'm ready to attend the UC system or UC campus in the fall of 2022. I wanna thank you. My name is Juan Carlos Lopez. I am your regional advisor for your, for your region. Should you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, my email is jlopez501 uh, at ucmerced.edu. My phone number is 209-382-4045. And again, I am your regional representative. So if you have any questions, by all means do, do, do ask. I wanna make sure that I become part, I, I help you with the process. It doesn't matter which campus you're applying to. Thank you very much and have yourself a wonderful day.